When working on radios, oftentimes the service manual or the alignment instructions will specify the use of an RF millivoltmeter for making some of the measurements. Now, I never had one here on the bench, and I always got by by using like an oscilloscope measurement or something on a spectrum analyzer. But when you're doing alignment measurements, oftentimes there's really no substitute for watching the peak reading of a meter uh, when you're trying to peak up a circuit. So uh, I was lucky enough to find this uh, RF millivoltmeter at a ham fest uh, last weekend for 60 bucks. So I really uh, almost couldn't pass it up. So in today's short video, I'm just going to take a quick little look at this meter and do an initial checkout to be sure that it works. Right, so this meter is a Booton Electronics uh, model 92C made right here in Booton, New Jersey, uh, only about a half an hour from where I live. Now if you're going to look for one of these meters, you really want to look for one that comes with the original probes. And the reason for that is that the probe and the meter were calibrated together. If we look at the, this probe, we might be able to see that uh, it says this probe was calibrated for serial number unit 423. And if we look at the top label of the meter itself, serial number 423. So this is the original probe that came with this meter, and that's a really nice find. Uh, in addition to that, the probe came with two additional accessories. Uh, there's a 50 ohm adapter here, and this 50 ohm adapter, again, if we look, uh, serial number 423. So this is the original 50 ohm adapter that uh, came along with this meter when it was made and calibrated along with it. And then the meter also comes along with, or the probe comes along with this, uh, guess, you know, just a flying probe adapter. And with this ground lead on there, this is usable up to about 100 megahertz or so. Uh, while with the 50 ohm adapter we're good to a little over 1.2 gigahertz. Okay, we've got the uh, meter turned on. I've got it uh, the 50 ohm adapter put on the end of the probe and have that connected up to my signal generator up here which is set to output a signal at 10 megahertz at uh, 0 dBm. So I hit the 0 dBm scale which is also the 300 millivolt full scale on the meter. Let's turn the signal generator on. And uh, lo and behold that reads right dead on top of, uh, of 0 dBm. Now the way the dBm scale works on here is uh, depending on what scale you've got, you add or subtract the dBm reading from the setting. So in this case, when it's set to zero and it reads zero, we have zero dBm. You'll notice if I set this to plus 10 dBm, and the meter now is going to read down here at minus 10. So I'm going to have plus 10, minus 10, so that's still zero dBm. So that's how the dBm scales work. That's kind of a bonus for me that the meter is actually uh, quite accurate. Uh, oftentimes, uh, if I'm going to use a meter like this for doing an alignment of a radio, we're just looking to peak the response like in an IF stage. So absolute measurements generally aren't as important, but nice bonus that it, uh, we've got a nice accurate meter here. So let's check it out on a couple more scales. Let's start working our way up. So there's a plus 1, plus 2, plus 3 dBm. Let's m pop up one scale here. So now on the plus 10 dBm scale, minus 7, so that's still plus 3 dBm work our way up. Okay, let's see, we get to right there is plus 10 dBm out of my signal generator and I, the generator, generator here starts to run out a little bit out of steam but uh, it's still pretty good at, uh, at plus 12 dBm. So, uh, so I know on the high end of the range here we're, we're pretty good. If I go to the plus 20 dBm scale here, so I've, I've got uh, plus 20 in this case minus 8 which is still plus 12 dBm so even that higher level scale is good. Let's check it out on the lower scales too. Okay I've set the signal generator to minus 10 dBm on the minus 10 dBm scale we're sitting right at 0 so that little looks good. Let's start working our way down. Let's see we work down to as minus 20 dBm so there's 10 dB down from 0 so that's minus 20. This should bring me to the 0 mark and it does. And we'll go down another 10 dB, so there's a minus 21, 22, 23, and I work my way down to minus 30 dBm. Now before I switch to minus 30, the, the lower two scales on this meter actually have a zero adjustment. Okay, so I pulled the probe off, sat it up here. Let's go to the uh, uh, minus 30 dBm scale and adjust our zero. And I should get it pretty close. And now we can connect back up to the signal generator, which is putting out minus 30 dBm. And there we go, uh, reading uh, pretty darn close to zero on the dBm scale, so that means that we're right at, right at minus 30. 
Let's uh, work again my way down. Let's go down to minus 40 dBm right there. And there we are at uh, minus 10, so that all works out good. Now again, before I change to the minus 40 dBm scale, we're going to zero that out as well. So let me uh, disconnect from the signal generator here again. Uh, switch to minus 40. And uh, we'll adjust the uh, zero to kind of get ourselves on the line there. And that looks, yeah, let's see, there we go. That's, that's pretty close. I guess this pot might be a little bit dirty. Might have to go in there and clean that. And let's go put this on there. And there we are at uh, zero. So that's minus 40. Let's work my way down to minus 50. And there we go. Uh, minus 10 on the minus 40 scale is minus 50 dBm. And that corresponds also to, if we look at the scale here, on the 3 millivolt scale, there's 1 millivolt, so this is uh, 700 microvolts. And of course, minus 50 dBm is 704 microvolts or so, so that's uh, pretty darn good. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick little look at this uh, Booten 92C uh, RF millivoltmeter that I uh, picked up at a ham fest. Uh, lucky enough to find it with the original probes, the original 50, 50 ohm uh, adapter, and the original uh, browser tip. Uh, with this browser tip, uh, you get a, a reasonably high input impedance, uh, high enough to even pick up RF if I touch the, the input, so <laughs> we can see that. But uh, you know, uh, over 100K at low frequencies and even uh, above about 5K ohms of uh, input impedance uh, up uh, close to 100 megahertz. So uh, this will work great for probing IF stages. Anyway, if you uh, like what you see, uh, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so. And comments are always welcome. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.